Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to bring you your fight picks for UFC Fight Night taking place in Mexico City where Yair Rodriguez will be taking on Jeremy Stevens in what should be an excellent featherweight matchup. The card for the most part is crunched for the podcast, but we have some debuting bouts out there and the way I'm doing the debuting bouts now, really all the information doesn't come out until the weigh-ins, so that's just kind of a little piece that I'm uh, doing now to separate them and uh, so those will end up on social media, but we'll be going over all of the non-debuting fights uh, as part of this show. So I think we have about nine here to go through. Let's get into it. Here's the show. All right, so we're going to be having the Panther, Pantera, Yair Rodriguez taking on the little heathen from Southern California, Jeremy Stevens in a great featured bout and the main event. So this is an interesting contest, but I think it's ultimately going to work out well for the hometown kid here, the Mexican fighter, Yair. I think that he has the tools to defeat Little Heathen, much like Zabit did. So Jeremy Stevens likes to be in the pocket. He likes to bang. He likes to plant and swing. And if he connects, you can ask guys that he's defeated like Josh Emmett where he fractured their faces when he connects you go down however when he has a hard time connecting he is shut down so he has losses to guys like Frankie Edgar, Hanado Conero, Jose Aldo and Zabit Magomed Sharapov and I think stylistically Yair is dynamic enough to move in and out of the pocket well enough to avoid the big heavy shots. Guys like Duho Choi were not able to, Gilbert Melendez, and obviously Emmett who I just mentioned, but Yair looks very, very good. We saw him in his win over Korean Zombie, a fight he was winning, the guy, uh, sorry, a fight he was losing, a fight that proved that he had grit and perseverance to fight to the last minute, and you're going to need that to go up against a guy like the Little Heathen. If Yair is able to keep range, he's able to utilize his amazing taekwondo and kickboxing skills, especially emphasizing the kicks, I think the Heathen is going to have a hard time in this one. However, because of Jeremy Stevens' ability to score KOs with his planted feet inside the pocket, it is a gamble for sure, and anything can happen. Ultimately, though, i got to go with the Pantera. I think he has the skills to pay the bills, and he picks up a W in his home country of Mexico. We are picking Yair Rodriguez in the main event. All right, in our next matchup, we have the former strawweight queen, the first ever strawweight queen, I believe, Carla Cookie Monster Esparza taking on Alexa Grasso, another hometowner coming from Guadalajara, Mexico. So not the town, but, you know, the country of origin for this contest. So I think we got to go a little edge there. Same goes for Yair. And ultimately, that's how I think this thing's going to play out is we're going to get another hometown Mexican winner taking place in Mexico City. Let's talk about why. So Carla Esparza, we know that she has some wrestling. She definitely did back in the early days of women's MMA where, you know, the takedown expertise wasn't quite there and she was able to exploit some very good wrestling, especially at the weight class. However, you know, ever since her loss to Joanna Janjacek and several other losses since then, to like Tatiana Suarez and even Claudia Gadelia, where they had a bit of a grappling contest, I think that her skills just aren't quite there to keep pace with Grasso. Grasso has a three-inch reach advantage and far superior boxing and kickboxing ability. I think she's going to be able to keep Esparza away from her, especially with a great jab, utilizing that reach advantage, good kicks to the solar plexus. I think she's going to be able to keep her at bay and pick up maybe a stoppage here. Esparza does have a few losses, two KOs uh, as losses, and her last one came just a little over a year ago. Uh, Actually, less than a year ago. No, actually, a full year ago. So, temporary 2018 to Tartiana Suarez. So, even though Esparza does have the superior takedown game, I don't think she's going to really be able to get it done here. She does have a submission game as well with four over her 14 wins, but I think Grasso has proven herself to be a decent defender of submissions, a decent defender of takedowns. However, Tatiana Suarez also did defeat her with a rear naked choke, though. Uh, So it is a little bit tough. I can see it going either way, honestly, if Esparza were to catch those takedowns. But I think Grasso's too good. I think her technical striking is going to keep her at bay. And ultimately, Alexa Grasso is going to pick up the W in Mexico City. In our next showcase at Bantamweight, where you're going to have El Teco Jose Alberto Quiones take on Paramalo 
Carlos Hauschen in what should be a very good contest. Both these guys have fairly similar experience levels. You know, we have Jose coming at 73, Hauschen coming at 10 at 4. But when we look at the fight IQ, the way to shut the door here, we only have two KOs and one submission for Jose. And over the 10 wins for Hauschen, eight KOs, two submissions. The guy's never seen the dis the judge's scorecard. He does have one KO loss, but as does Kiones himself. Also, both these guys are coming off of losses, so they are looking to avenge themselves. Ultimately, when I look at the numbers, though, I think that what's going to play out here is just a little bit better talent out of Haushin. I don't think since he's ever been submitted before, we're going to have to worry about, I think, that superior grappling game from Kiones. I think that Haushin's going to be able to keep it standing. And while his output isn't as good as Kiones, he's proven he has knockout power at this weight class. I think that he's going to have good ability to get into the pocket as well. I think he maybe doesn't move quite as quickly as Kiones, but I think he's able to stand and bang better, and I think he'll be able to put Kiones down. Granted, Kiones does have a two-inch reach advantage, but I don't think he's going to be able to exploit it here. I ultimately think that Haushin is going to pick up the W in Mexico City. All right, the next one here is extremely close to call. But I have the slight edge going to the outsider. So we're going to have Mark Polo Reyes, El Toro, take on Kyle Nelson, who fights out of Canada, and he is that outsider we're talking about. I think that Nelson is going to have a very, very slight edge when it comes to the submission and grappling game. So Paul Reyes proves he has one submission over his eight wins, but this guy's fight IQ, his ability to shut the door, not that great. He's training over at Alliance MMA, but I don't think that's proving him, uh, you know, that's doing it what he needs to basically get wins here. He has two losses, KOs back to back, and I think Nelson might be able to even do the same. He has four KOs over his 12 wins, but ultimately I think he's going to try to exploit the takedown game uh, against Reyes. He does have a good submission output. He does have a very good takedown level. We know that uh, what we see out of Reyes with his takedown defense isn't that great. He does it taken out more often than not when guys try to exploit that factor against him. And I think ultimately Nelson's going to be able to pick up a win here. So we are picking Kyle Nelson in this bantamweight matchup. In our next light heavyweight matchup, we are going to have Vinceas Maria Castro take on Paul the Bear Jew Craig. And this one hurts me because I love the Bear Jew. However, I do not have him picking up a W here. We have Vinceas. I think that Vinceas is a much better striker, even though we know the Bear Jew has very good grappling. We have Vinceas with his eight submission victories himself, and he has that much higher striking output. I think he's able to win in more areas. I could see him potentially shutting down the grappling of the Bear Jew keeping it standing and exploiting his higher output and his ability, I think, to move a little bit better. I think he moves like a little bit lighter man, whereas the Bear Jew is a little bit more of a heavy pressure, lumbering fighter. And once he's on the mat, he does quicken the pace, but he has to get there. And I think that Vinceas is going to be able to prevent that. The takedown, you know, defense here is kind of equal for these guys both of them do like it on the mat so they, if they can get there they will be more than happy but I work, we should end up with a great Brazilian jiu-jitsu matchup where ultimately I think the Brazilian comes away on top here in Vinceas we are picking him in this light heavy matchup in our next bout, this time at Ladies Bantamweight, we're going to have the Pitbull, Betch Cohea, take on Sajara Eubanks. And in this one, it is hard to pick against Eubanks. So Eubanks does not have the most spectacular record. She she doesn't even have a lot of experience in the UFC or in MMA in general. She's 4-3 and three, with her last outing being a loss to Aspen Ladd. But when she first entered into the UFC, she got that two-fight win streak, Lauren Murphy, Roxanne Modafari. And we've only seen Betch Cohea kind of get worse and worse since her split decision win over Jessica I. And that win last came in 2016. She has losses to Irene Aldana and Holly Holm over the past couple of years. And I don't think she's going to get back on track here. You know, her output isn't that great. Her ability to shut the door isn't that great. She only has the two KOs, no submissions over her 10 wins. Whereas we look over at Eubanks, she has two KOs over four wins. And so a much higher percentage to shut the door there. And I think that's going to help her a lot. Also, the output's a little bit higher by Eubanks, and I think that Kohea gets hit just a little bit more. 
And as well, speaking of getting hit more, I think she may be able to stand behind that jab pretty well because she is rocking a three-inch reach advantage against Kohea. One thing to keep in mind, though, for Kohea, Kohea is a little bit more of a natural 135-er, whereas we're seeing Eubanks move up from the flyweight, so she's going up a 10-pound weight class. Maybe this will be better for her. Maybe she won't have to cut as much weight, but it could ultimately make things a little bit unstable just knowing that we have you know, this change uh, in weight class. So just something to keep in mind, even though we are ultimately picking Eubanks to pick up a W in Mexico City. All right, so this is our last crunch fight of the night. We have Claudio Poles, El Nino, taking on Marcos Mariano. So I don't know a whole lot about these guys. They are relatively new to the UFC, uh, and they don't have too many fights underneath their belts. Uh, Mariano last lost to Lando Venata back in early 2019, whereas Claudio here is coming off a W in his last outing back in May 19th of 2018. It is close between these guys, but the striking of Marcos has not looked very good at all. He has very little output. He gets hit a lot, and I don't think he's ultimately going to be able to pick up a win here. I think that Claudio is a little bit better fighter. I think he's a higher fight IQ, and he has the submission game in his back pocket. He has five submissions over his five wins. I think his takedown game is maybe you know not great if he needs to get it there, but I think he could get it there potentially, and if if he does, he will have a significant advantage. Stays on the feet. It is closer, I think, there. But Claudio has that much higher output. Maybe not power, but much higher output. And I think he'll be able to at least pick up a decision victory here against Marco, especially if he can score a couple takedowns and just outstrike him a bit. Can be a great point victory. Uh, but I wouldn't expect too many, you know, flash in the pan moments here. Too many lightning in a bottle moments. I don't think this one is going to end in any kind of uh, stoppage or, you know, spectacular fashion. I think it's going to ultimately go to the judges' scorecard. So in this one, we are picking Claudio Poles in this matchup. So let's go over them one more time for the fights we have crunch. We have Rodriguez, Grasso, Bravo, Haushin, Nelson, Marea, Eubanks, and Poles. That's actually only eight fights. The ones we are not doing right now, we will have more information. We have Moreno versus Askarov. We have Aldana versus Melo. That's a Melo's to a late replacement uh, for Irene Aldana. Uh, Ariani Cardinalosi taking on Angela Hill. I have more to say about Angela Hill uh, maybe on social media. And then Sergio Pettis taking on a debuter in Tyson Nam. And that one, I believe, is going to be at Flyway. So those are the four fights who do not have crunch, but we have the other eight here for you. Now, before we get to housekeeping and anything else, I just want to throw a couple things out there. This is an international card. And when we talk about international cards, we know that they are a little bit dangerous. And so I want to advise everyone to be very careful with the judging that could take place here. Uh, maybe some hometown edges with the Mexican judges will happen. And so we got to keep that in our back pocket when we look at these fights to make our gambling decisions on. So just keep that in mind. If you do decide that uh, you do not personally want to gamble on this, and I am personally having that consideration, we do have another one coming up soon. And so we're going to have in Copenhagen, Hermanson versus Cannoneer. Again, international though. And then we have another one in Australia for UFC 243. But we usually have a little less to worry about, I think, with the actual uh, pay-per-view cards. But we won't be back into America or the United States until October 12th of 2019 in Tampa, Florida, where Junjicek takes on Watterson. So we got a nice international run here, depending on how you look at it. Maybe you like some of these different start times they put on these sometimes, especially the European cards, or maybe you hate them. It's, uh, it's really up to you. And then we also get another one. We get a Boston card, and then we go all the way to the Far East for Singapore, kind of going over the uh, you know fights up until we get to the great one, the BMF, the baddest mother in the world, Mazidal versus Diaz. That one I am really looking forward to. Uh, also, just a, another thing to mention, I started going over. If you uh, looked me up on Twitter, and somebody did, they didn't actually tweet at me, but they sent me a message, and I can appreciate you for listening and picking up on this. Uh, I put some information out there for NFL fight NFL fights uh, for NFL game pick. So I'm just going to throw that one out real quick. Uh, we actually did pretty well uh, considering I only had really one week's worth of data right now. The giants are playing and they're losing and they're my, they were my pick against the Browns. Granted, you know, this was before Sam Darnold. We found out that he was injured. I know this is an MMA podcast, but uh, feel free to shut off. You don't want to li listen to me talk about the NFL from here on out. 
uh, for the rest of this episode at least. So we came in at about 57% right now accuracy. We're 8-6. and six. Not too bad, I think, for the amount of data I have available to me right now. That's okay. It's a little worse than the UFC, but we only got that one week. And so I'm going to keep working on that one. That one's in total experimentation mode. There's not going to be any kind of NFL podcast, but hopefully by week five or six, I can uh, let you guys know if I'm giving – you know, some pretty good information at that point. I'd like to get it up to the fights right now. We, we are doing a little bit better than we have in the recent past. And so if I can get that thing up to like 70% high 60s, I might give them out with a little bit more confidence. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. I'm just gathering data, seeing how it goes. It's just an experiment. You know, it feels like the one sport where you can kind of gather everything one day of the week and then let it play out instead of, you know, NF, uh, sorry, NBA, NHL, MLB, all the, I mean, that's a grind. That's a grind to constantly get in stats. Uh, you really need uh, a web scraping tools at that point to gather everything. With what I'm doing for the NFL, it's, you know, it's a little tedious, but it's much easier to do with the frequency of games that they play. So we'll see how that one plays out. Uh, just to go over the overall for the actual uh, fight metric here, I haven't done that in a little while, so let's throw that out there. So overall for the you know crunched fights, we're at 64%. And uh, since we started the podcast, so we're not too, too bad. We actually ticked up. We dipped as low as 62. We're back up to 64. All the crunched fights are now 171 in 98. So we are doing pretty well. We had a few dips in there, but we just got back into the 70%. I'm feeling good about it with the Cowboy, you know, Gaethje card we just had. Granted, this Mexican card may not go as well. We'll have to see how it plays out, but I have pretty good confidence we'll be able to keep these percentages high. All right, so I think that will bring us on to housekeeping. We don't have any emails this week, but just like any other week, you can get in touch with the Fighting Spirit Podcast at fightingspiritpodcast at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with me on Twitter at MMAFightPix01. If you want to throw some NFL stuff at me, go ahead and do it there too. We'll be talking about it for the remainder of the season, probably as kind of an ender like we had here. I'll be throwing that out week to week, I think. And uh, yeah, Spotify, YouTube, we have the Patreon as well. If you want to get as part of those liquor reviews, you want to help drive those um, and tell your friends, share the show. That's another thing as well. If you are listening to the show, please share it with somebody. Help try to grow it out a little bit. If you're being entertained by me, maybe somebody else will too. And word of mouth will help grow this thing a little bit. You know, I like to, uh, you know, even if, you know, just a dialogue would be great with a lot of people, especially somebody I don't know. We had Nick on Twitter once right into the show uh, via Twitter. Uh, so if you're out there listening to this point, please write me back. You know, just send me something. I'm more than happy to answer it on the show. And uh, yeah, so I'm just rambling a bit here. Uh, I think that is about it. So I'll be back with the retrospective on Saturday or Sunday. We always know that's up in the air. And keep an eye out for social media. I'll probably pick the week. I'll probably put the week three NFL picks out there uh, later on in the week. So keep an eye out for that. And that's like I said, just an experiment. Do not bet the farm on those. Uh, and yeah. So until I speak with you again next time, happy fight picking.